Hey guys, this is Angelo. Welcome to my three month update comparing Mintos Invest in Access and Bondora Go and Grow. Today is September 12, 2019, and exactly three months ago on June 12, I invested 1000 euro each into both Mintos Invest in Access and Bondora Go and Grow to compare the returns, the experience, and how much we're able to withdraw from each platform at different points in time. Since at the end of the day, one of the main selling points of both strategies is easy access to your money. Today we'll take a look at my accounts and at the results so far after 3 months. Ok, let's start with Mintos. Before we take a look at my account, here's a quick reminder. Mintos launched Invest in Access in June 2019 to make it easier for investors to spread their investment over the entire marketplace without needing to spend too much time on the auto-invest settings. At the same time, they wanted to make it easier for investors to access their money more easily before the end of the long term. All right, so here's our Invest and Access account after exactly three months. And in case you're wondering, this is actually my wife's account since I have a separate account under my name where I invest everything via the auto invest. And that's my main Mintus account. So as you can see, after three months, we made a total of 23 euro and 62 cents so far in interest on Mintos Invest and Access. And let's take a look at our internal rate of return. And we currently have an internal rate of return of 9.7% per year, which is still a bit lower than the average interest rate of the portfolio. So let's see if we manage to get into double digits. Let's take a look at what we're actually invested in. So most of our money is in personal loans, followed by car loans and short-term loans. Here's how we're diversified by country and loan originators. And our biggest loan originator is Mogo, followed by ID Finance, Akulaku, and Dinero in its fourth place, which I'm not too happy about. And all our loans come with a buyback guarantee. I like that Invest and Access spreads the money evenly across many loans available on the platform. But sadly, that also means you're gonna pick up many loans with less interesting rates, like 6% per year. I wish we would be able to exclude some loan originators from the portfolio, and I'm gonna show you why. So here, for example, you see a loan by Dinero with an interest rate of 17%, which is late right now. So first you're probably thinking, oh great, an interest rate of 17% per year. But sadly, this is a short-term loan with an initial term of up to 30 days. I think in this case it was even just 20 days when we bought it. And it should have been paid back on the 16th of July already. Today is the 12th of September, so we're almost 60 days late already. Normally that wouldn't be a problem, but sadly this loan originator doesn't pay interest on delayed payments. This means we're not going to receive any interest whatsoever on the 60 days that it takes to kick in the buyback. So just like that, this seemingly interesting interest rate of 17% per year is going to turn into an interim rate of return of only 5 to 6%. And to make matters worse, because of the seasonal decrease in interest rates on Mintos, while here these loans came with a 17% interest rate, we're still buying new loans from Dinero with an interest rate of now only 10%. So I really hope that we're gonna add the ability to exclude certain loan originators who don't pay interest on delayed payments, as well as potentially being able to set an interest rate minimum that we want to invest in, like for example 10 or 11%. So as I mentioned, there's currently a seasonal dip in average interest on the Mintos marketplace. So while we had some loans with interest rates up to 16 or 17% a couple of weeks or months ago, the highest available interest rate right now is around 12% or 11.5% even. But that's very normal and should get better around winter time. So the average interest rate of my portfolio dropped by around 0.75% since I started. But if you're just starting out, Mintos now shows an average return of only 9.57% per year for new portfolios. So when you see this average interest rate here, I was still quite lucky to be able to pick up some higher interest loans a couple of weeks and months ago, which is not possible right now. Okay, now let's take a look at the cashing out part, which is one of the major selling points of this investment strategy. You're only able to cash out the current part of your portfolio right away, not the ones that are late or in grace period. And here at least it's nice to see that the percentage dropped a bit compared to the previous month. And if we wanted to cash out right now, we click on cash out. Here we can see the max amount we can cash out right now. So around 73%. You enter the amount, press cash out. And then Mintos is gonna start selling the loans and adding the money to your account to withdraw. And now let's take a look at Bondora Go and Grow. Go and Grow was launched exactly one year before Invest in Access in June 2018. Go and Grow automatically invests your money into a portfolio of over 80,000 single loans from Estonia, Finland, and Spain. And you get an average interest rate of around 6.75% per year, 
which is added daily to your account, which can be very motivating to see. So far, after exactly three months, we earned a total of 16 euro and 60 cents on our 1000 euro investment. Let's take a look at the interim rate of return right now. And that's exactly 6.75% per year. The biggest advantage that Go and Grow has compared to Invest and Access, and the reason why I love using it for short term investing since around August of last year, is that we're able to withdraw the full amount of our investment minus a flat 1 euro withdrawal fee. So in this case, if we wanted to withdraw our investment, we click on withdraw, choose the payment type, and then we can withdraw the full amount minus a flat 1 euro withdrawal fee. So in this case, we'll be able to withdraw 1015 euro and 60 cents, which is way more than the 733 euro which we could currently withdraw at Mintos Invest and Access. And in case you haven't seen the article on my blog yet, here I've been tracking my experiment week by week since the beginning. And so you can see how many weeks it took Mintos Invest and Access, even though it had a higher average interest rate, to pass Bondorgo and Grow. And in this case, it was seven weeks. But the thing is, when I started my Invest and Access portfolio, the interest rates were still quite high on Mintos. And now the average interest rate on the Invest and Access portfolio has dropped quite a bit. So it might take a new Invest and Access portfolio with only 9.57% per year right now, much longer than 7 weeks, to actually pass Bondor and Grow in interest received, while still giving up some liquidity because of the loans that are late or in grace period. So as we can see, after 3 months, Mintos Invest and Access is still in the lead as far as received interest goes because of the higher average interest rate and it's likely it's gonna stay that way as well. However, because of the seasonal drop in interest rate on Mintos and the average interest rate dropping to as low as 9.5%, it might take much longer than the seven weeks it took for our comparison for Mintos to take over in received interest compared to Bondorgo and Grow. So it might be closer to 10 weeks or more for new investors that are starting today which is probably longer than most people would expect when they compared it to at first glance. And while the number of late loans has decreased a bit on Mintos, we're still only able to withdraw about 71% of our investment there. I also hope that they're gonna add the ability to exclude certain loan originators on the platform, as well as set a minimum interest rate of, let's say, 10%, for example. After three months, Bondorgo and Grow is still far ahead as far as liquidity is concerned, as we're able to withdraw the full amount of our investment, including the interest we received, minus a flat one-year withdrawal fee. So for me, Go and Grow is still the preferred strategy when it comes to short-term investments in peer-to-peer -peer lending, as I really appreciate being able to access my money if I need it sooner. Either way, I'm curious to see how the comparison is going to progress over the coming months, so stay tuned for future updates. Last but not least, if you'd like to support me, I put the links to both platforms down below, where you can get a 5 year bonus on Bondora Go and Grow and a 1% cashback on Mintos. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please don't forget to hit that like button and to subscribe if you want to see more in the future. See you soon.